Hi everyone, hope you all must be doing great. So let's start with another interesting chapter that is PGBP. Again, it's a very interesting chapter. I understand it's quite big, it's quite voluminous chapter, but at the same time, very interesting and very, very important for examination point of view. And I'll make sure that I'll, de uh, I'll touch each and every concept of PGBP. And also if there is any complex provision, I'll explain you that in detail. So don't worry, we are now starting from PGBP uh, for PGBP revision. So uh, first of all, we should know what are the contents which are covered in PGPP. What are the contents which we should study in PGPP? You understand that we have section starting from section 28 to 44, that is PGPP, correct? So if you look at your screen, I have just uh, jotted down all these sections which are there and I have also divided them into various parts. First of all, section 28 is a charging section of PGPP. It tells us what all income will be taxed in this particular head. So we should know very much, we should be familiar with section 28 first. Then there is another section, section 29. It tells us how we will computing our PGBP income. So how we should go about it if we would, if we would like to calculate our PGBP income or someone else PGBP income. So what is the mode of computation? Section 29 will tell us, right? So 28 is a charging section. 29 is computation of PGPP. Then we have another set of sections starting from section 30 till 37. These sections are related to the deductions which are allowed in PGPP. These are the, I can simply, I can say that these are the expenses which are allowed from PGPP income. So we will uh, see one by one what is section 30, what is section 31, 32 and so on. So from section 30 to 37, I have made it one part that these are the deductions which are allowed, right? There is one more small section 38. 38 is proportionate deduction because if it might happen that there is any expense which you are incurring with the, which the assessee is incurring, but that is related to business also as well as for other purpose also. Let's say he has taken a building on rent. Some part of the building is being used for business purpose and some part of the building is used for personal purpose. So in that case, we have to take only that particular expense, which is related to our business or profession purpose. So that is simply section 38. It says that if there is an expense which has been spent on more than uh, for, for more than two use or for, for more than two purpose, then in that case, we have to take the proportionate amount that is only related to business or my profession. So that is section 38. We will discuss that also. After this part, so you understand section 30 to 37 are the deductions which are allowed from PGBP income. After that, we have another part and there are certain sections which will tell you that there are certain expenses, certain deductions which are not allowed. See, it is opposite to this part. Section 32, 37 will say that these deductions are allowed. But we have some sections like section 40, small a, 40A2, 40A3, 43B. These are some of the sections which will tell us that, that these deductions will not be allowed. And these are quite important sections also from examination point of view as well. So we should know about these sections as well. Then there are some miscellaneous sections, but it, please don't regard it that these are just sundry sections, miscellaneous sections. So these are not important. No, these are very, very important. Right. The entire chapter is important. You understand in your examination, most of your paper will come from this chapter, especially your first question, first uh, first main question uh, that will comprises mainly of PGBP. And again, I'm telling you, it's a very easy chapter, interesting chapter. If you know how to deal with this chapter, you will be able to secure very good marks. Okay. So we have some other miscellaneous sections like section 41 that is deemed business income. So we have two sections which are related to income of PGP. One is charging section 28. And there is one more section, section 41. It is known as deemed PGVP income. So I'll tell you that there are certain incomes that are, although not very much PGVP, but they are deemed to be PGVP income. That is that we will always assume that these income are related to our business or profession that we will see in section 41. Then we have section, small section of 43.1 that is actual cost, whatever the cost of the asset. Uh, so what are the components, what are, what are the things, what are the items that will be included in actual cost, we will see in section 43.1. 40B is related to partnership firm. 
how much remuneration we can pay to the partners that is section 40 small b then 40 double a maintenance of accounts 40 a b audit of accounts 40 double a 40 a b is again important and there is um, minor amendment also there so you should know these sections accounts maintenance of accounts and audit presumptive income again important so there are certain provisions in pgvp where we can calculate uh, your income as per your books of accounts also and on presumptive basis also so we have certain sections in our syllabus like 44 double a 40 sorry 44 ad 44 ada and 44 ae so these three sections although there are certain other presumptive sections also but that is uh, not in our syllabus that we'll see in our ca final stage but here in our ca inter we have three sections related to presumptive income 44 ad 44 ae and 44 ada right and then we will talk about agriculture income also although in your study material in your institute study material agriculture income is given in chapter one in basic concepts but i discuss generally agriculture income with this chapter so we will discuss agriculture income also here in pgpp so you i think you have now uh, got the rough idea how this pgpp will look like so first we will do the charging section then section 29 and then we will come to this portion first deductions allowed then deductions not allowed so miscellaneous sections and presumptive income and agriculture income so this is what about, uh, what PGBP is all about. Okay, so let's start with the very first charging section, section 28. So if you, uh, I think you have already downloaded your uh, this handwritten book, you can easily download from the website. Okay, in the da download section, if you will go, you can easily download this book. So we have section 28, charging section of PGBP. What is charging section? Now we understand we have done the char charging section of salary, what type of income will be taxable under the, that particular head? House property, we have done the charging section, section 22. What was it saying? There must be a building, assessee must be the owner. That building should not be used for your own business and profession, right? So in the same way, we have charging section, section 28 in PGPP. It says what type of income will be deemed to be, will always be taxable as PGPP income. So we have certain points over here, such type of income which I have jotted down over here, such type of income will always be taxable as PGBP income. So first point is very easy. It says that if you have income from any business, from any business, any business means any business, it could be legal business or illegal business also. So if the SSE has income from any business or any kind of profession, which he is carrying during the previous year, which he is carrying during the previous year. So it is it necessary that he should carry the business for the entire year, entire 365 or 366 days? No. Even if he is carrying the business at any time during the previous year, even for one month or even I will say even for a single day if any business or profession has been carried out by the SSE, then that income will be your PGPP income. So this one is easy from any business or profession carried by the SSE at any time during the previous year. Got it? First point easy. Second point, everything is easy, I am telling you. Okay. Second point says that any gifts or perquisites which you receive. So we have done the gifts and perquisites also in the chapter of salary, but those gifts and perquisites were getting received from the employer. If employer is giving you those gifts or perquisites, that is taxable under salary. But in case your customers, your clients, your uh, customers which are related to your business, your clients which are related to your profession, they might also give you some gifts. Let's say if you uh, if SSE is uh, having a profession, let's say he's a lawyer and he uh, fights a case for his client and his clients give him fees also and apart apart from that because uh, this uh, lawyer has given him such a wonderful services so he this person this his client is giving him a gift as well apart from the fees so the gift which you receive from your clients your customers or even your suppliers during the course of your business and profession that also becomes your PGPP right so gifts and units from clients or customers during the course of your business so if you receive gifts from your employer, that will go in salary. If you receive gifts from your clients, customers, suppliers during the course of your business and profession, PGBP. If you receive gifts from any other person like your friends, relatives, etc., that we will see in IFOS, correct? In rel from relatives, we understand it will be exempt from non-relatives. It will be taxable as IFOS income. So gifts is, uh, uh, we see gift in all these three chapters, salary also, 
from employer, PGVP also from clients or customers or suppliers, and in IFOS also, right? So gifts and perquisites during the course of business and profession is as a specifically covered by section 28 right third is if you receive any compensation why because there was any business contract that business contract gets terminated and because of that termination of that contract assessi receives, uh, receives certain compensation so that compensation which you receive that is again your pgbp income right if that contract gets terminated or in the in case that contract uh, the terms of that contract gets modified and because of that modification, you are uh, suffering some damages. So to compensate uh, for, for that damages, the other party provides you with the compensation. So the compensation which you receive on the termination or modification of any business contract, that compensation is also, I understand that is compensation is quite in a nature of capital nature, right? It is not a revenue income. Let's say it is, a, even if it is of capital nature, then section 28 has specifically said to us that any compensation which you receive during the, because of the breach or any modification of the terms of business contract, then it will be taxable as VGPP, right? Fourth is non-competing fees or non-sharing fees. Non-competing fees means if you receive any amount because that other person has provided you the amount because he wants that you should not compete with him. Let's say any person who is running a restaurant and you also uh, opens a restaurant in front of uh, that particular restaurant and that owner gives you rupees, 20 lakh rupees that please don't open your restaurant over here. You can open your restaurant somewhere after um, beyond 10 kilometers or beyond 20 kilometers, go and open that restaurant over there, not here. So that person is compensating with you that let's say 20 lakh, 30 lakh, 40 lakh rupees. So whatever amount which you are getting as a non-competing fees, that is again taxable as PGBP. Salary bonus commission interest of the remuneration received by the partners. So if you receive salary, so always whenever this word comes uh, to uh, in front of a salary, we always take that, that income in under the head salary. No, please don't take it uh, blindly under the head salary. Please wait and see from whom you are receiving the salary. So if you are receiving it salary from your employer and there is a relationship of master and servant, then it can go in salary income. But if a partner is receiving salary or other remuneration from their partnership firm, so here the relationship of employer and employee is not there. There's, there's no relationship of master and servant between the partnership firm and the partners. Partners are the owners, not the servant. So this income, the salary, remuneration, it can be by any name, commission, bonus, etc. This all income is taxable under the head PGBP. So if partners earn any salary from their business, it will be taxable as PGBP income. And detail we will also see in section 40 small b. So there is also a section 40 small b. We will see details over there as well. Sixth is scheme and insurance policy. The scheme and we have already dealt in uh, the chapter salary as well. This again, key man comes in all three chapters, one in PG, one in salary, second is PGBP, third is IFOS. See, you understand who the key man is. Key man is an important person and this key man insurance is taken by the company, that organization, the, the businessman takes this key man insurance on that particular uh, employee who is a major employee for him. So in case the employee receives this amount, in case the employee receives this amount, it is taxable as salary. In case the employer receives this amount, this is taxable in the hands of employer and under this particular head PGBP. If the employer does not keep this money with themselves, they give it to their family members, it is taxable as IFOS in the hands of family members. Because scheme and insurance is something, the general thumb rule of any insurance is that whosoever pays premium, whosoever pays premium, in case if claim is to be given by the insurance company, that insurance company always give claim to the person who was paying the premium. So who was paying the premium? The person who has taken the key man insurance. Who has taken the key man insurance? The company, the business has taken the key man insurance. So if something happens to the key man, then the insurance company will, claim, will give the claim to the business, to the employer, right? So if they will keep that, the business is keeping this money with themselves, it will be their PGBP income. But business will say, no, no, I will not keep this money. Let give, let's give let give this money to the employee. So if they are giving to the employee, it will become the salary income of the employee. But let's say if employee is died and because of that uh, death, uh, the employer has received the ins key man insurance claim from the insurance company. Now the employer, the company, the business is not keeping this money with themselves. They are giving it to the employee's family member. 
so family member is getting income so their income would be accessed by fos right so key man insurance we discuss in three chapters one is salary if employee receives it if employer receives it, it's pgbb and the third is if the family member receive it or any other person receives it then it is it is their ifos income okay export incentives so uh there are we have we already know that um, government promotes export so in that case how they promote export there are various uh, methods so that they can promote export they can give us uh, give us cash assistance right so if the government or any other person is giving us a cash assistance in case of export then that cash assistance which we are receiving that is our pgpp income or it can be in the form of duty drawback right or it can also be in the form of that they have given us the import entitlement license and if we sell that import entitlement license can is transferable and if we sell that that income will again be taxed as pgpp income the export incentive is pgpp conversion of stock into capital asset see we understand that whenever we sell our stock if we sell our stock then our stock is related to pgbp and if we are selling it then our pgbp income will arise similarly if we are not selling our stock but we are just converting our stock from a uh, pgbp from stock is converted into a capital asset then again your pgbp income will arise because we understand in capital gain also when capital is assets gets converted into stock capital gain implications are there that we will see how we will take capital gain over there but if capital asset is converted into stock capital gain implications if stock is converted into capital asset then pgbp income will arise right you can learn in the same manner let's say if stock is sold then also pgbp and if its stock is converted into capital asset then again it is pgbp income so whatever is the market value of the stock on that rate of conversion we take at selling price whatever the cost was that was purchase price and this is the, the difference between them is the income right mutual association if a mutual if there is any mutual association what is a mutual association where there are certain members who uh, come together and make a association for them so that is mutual association and we see that why we call it mutual association because there is no difference between uh, the members and the uh, the association which is so formed so in that case we see we can say generally people say that we cannot generate income from ourselves because members and this mutual association are different are not different right but here the law has specifically mentioned section 28 has specifically mentioned that if there is any mutual association for example rwa society rwa society is what there are let's say there is a locality there is a society in which there are let's say 50 houses and these 50 houses members come together and they say that we will make a rwa resident welfare association so that we can do something related to the society for the benefit of the society but through this rwa association so rwa association is a mutual association so section 28 says that if this mutual association even provides some services to its members that rwa association is providing services to its members and in that and in this case if any profit is generated then that profit is also be taxed as pgp income right and the last is if a specified business asset is sold so what is specified business uh we have section 35 ad that we will be discussing in this chapter 35 ad we understand there are 14 types of businesses that hospital businesses of uh, 100 beds or more or uh, we have hotel business of two star or above category business so we have certain 14 business that we call a specified business there is a specific section 35 ad but i tell you although i'll be discussing 35 ad i'll tell you that in the default tax regime if the sec is following def following default tax regime that is new regime in that case 35 ad is not available in that case 35 ad is not available but if the sec is following optional scheme then 35 ad is available 35 ad is available only in the optional scheme but not in default scheme so we'll discuss more in 35 ad but yes uh if the person is opting for optional scheme and they can claim 100 percent reduction on a capital expenditure except land goodwill and financial instruments they can claim 100 percent deduction on the capital expenditure that is let's say if they have purchased a machine for rupees 20 lakh they can claim 100 percent reduction in the very first year so 20 lakh they can claim in the very first year so the value of this machine will become zero because they have 100 percent taken the reduction in the very first year so it becomes zero 
let's say after two, three, four, five years, they are now selling this asset. Let's say they are selling an asset for five lakh or six lakh. So again, this income which they are now getting because the value was zero in the books. Now they have sold it for five lakh. So five lakh is the income. So the five lakh income which they have received, that will be taxed as PGPP income. So if sale of specified is business asset, specified business asset, we will see there are 14 types of businesses that we will see in 3580. Got it? So these are some of the points. These are the important points which are covered under section 28. So if a CC has these types of income, this income will be taxed as your PCBP. Got it? Okay. So let's come to next section, section 29. Section 29 is computation of PGPP. How do we compute our PGPP income? It's very easy to compute our PGPP income. And this is one of the very important sections, especially because this section will help you to deal with those questions, specifically the first question, which is there, uh, which always comes in your examinations regarding a, a total income question. So where most of the things are related to PGBP. So you will be requiring how we should compute our, we should know how we should compute our PGBP income. So I tell you, let me discuss this also. Let's say there is an assessee, Mr. A. And for this year, previous year, 23, 24, there is a PNL account for his business. See, we understand there are two sides, debit side and credit side. Debit side, we have all expenses. Credit side, we have all, all income. And if the income side is greater than expenses, then we have net profit also. And in case if expenses side are, is greater, then we have net loss, right? So let me take it. If we have some income over here by income one, income two, income three and so on, income four and so on. We have some expenses like expense one, expense two, expense three, expense four, expense one, expense two, expense three, expense four, and so on. And then we have net profit. Let's say, let's say income side was greater. So we have net profit. So let's say we have net profit of 10 lakh rupees. So this is our PNL account. So how you will calculate your PGBP income section 29 will say, will tell us how you should calculate your PGBP income. So first of all, we have to step one should be, we have to always start from our net profit. We have to start off uh, from our net profit. So first of all, how we will compute our PGBP. Let's say I'm writing it over here. Computation of PGBP income. So step one should be, step one should be, you don't have to write steps and all, but you should know, you should follow these steps. Step one should be, you, your starting point should always be the net profit. So first of all, please write net profit as per PNL account. So whatever is the net profit, let's say here, the net profit is 10 lakh. Please write it that this is the net profit. This is this should be the step one. First of all, blindly, whatever is the net profit, uh, profit is given for that particular year. Please start from there. That should be your starting point. Let's say if you can ask me, let's say if sir, if it is not profit, let's say if, if this would have been loss over here, then there is no problem. You can start with your net profit, like right, you can write net profit or loss as per PNL account. And just simply if it is a loss, then take it as a negative value. That's it. No problem at all. So if it is positive, so take it as a positive value. If it is a loss, then you can take it as a negative value. No problem at all. Right. Okay. So this is the net. This is this should be the step one. Net profit as a PNL account. Step two should be you have to look at your expenses side. You have to look at your expenses side. Right. You have to scan each and every expense. Because we know, I was telling you that we can allow only those expenses, we can allow only those deductions, which are allowed under section 30 to 37. And I'll just discuss these sections also in a couple of minutes. But let's understand 29 first. So we understand that there are certain sections which are covered under section 30 to 37. These are the expenses which are allowed, that are deductions which are allowed. So what you have to see over here, you have to see the step two should be 
that you have to scan your expenses side. Just go and check each and every expense which is debited to PNL account. So please check whether it is allowed under section 30 to 37 or we will see what are 30 to 37. But just check if the answer is yes, it is allowed under section let's say 31. Whatever is 31, let's say it is allowed under section 31. You will say okay, correct expense. Debited, correctly debited, no problem. We have no problem. If expense 2, let's say expense 2 is allowed under section 36, we will say we have no problem. We have no issues with, with it because it is allow, allowable expense and it is correctly debited. We have no issue. Okay. Keep on scanning. Keep on scanning each and every expense. Keep on checking each and every expense. Let's say there is expense number 3. You apply section 30 to 37. Let's say you apply section 30, it is not getting applied. 31, it is not getting applied. 32, so on. 36, 37 and so on. No section is uh, covered. This expense is not covered by any of the section. So you will say no, no. This expense will not be allowed. This expense, we cannot keep it in the debit side. Please take this away. Take this away. Please take it away from the PL account. We cannot debit this expense. So what you will do is you will you will take it away. So how you will take it away? When you will take it away, what implication will it it make on this 10 lakh? What implication will it make on our net profit? Sir, if we will take any expense over from here, it will increase as my net profit will be increasing because my expense are getting deleted from here. If my expenses are getting deleted from here, so what impact it will make? It will increase my profit. It will increase my profit, right? So what you will do is you will check the so step number two is you have to check you have to you have to scan each and every expense of yours you have to scan each and every expense of yours and if this is okay this is okay but this is not okay take it out so what implication will, will it make in your computation sir my net profit will increase let's say if this expense was of two lakh rupees so if i'll take it out so your net profit from 10 lakh it will become 12 lakh rupees right so you have to add so what you will say, I am adding my step number two is add expenses debited to PNL account, debited to PNL account, but not allowed. These expenses are not allowed under PGBT. So you will add such expenses, whatever the expense amount is to add such expenses, right? So let's say expense number four was okay with it. We, let's say it was allowed under section 35. So we'll say, okay, that is okay. So after step number two, so what you have done, you have written your net profit or net loss, whatever the case may be. You have checked your debit side. Now it is turned for the credit side. Now it's turned for the credit side. Now check each and every income, which is credited to PNL account. Any income which is covered under section 28, you will say, okay, that is PGBP. Section 28 also, and even if it is covered under section 41, we will see 41 in uh, pro uh, pro pro probably in my next lecture or next to next lecture i'll cover uh, section 41 but section 41 deals with the deemed pgvp income it deals with deemed pgvp income that there are certain income which are not actually pgvp but we will always assume that these are pgvp income see i was uh, referring section 41 also Section 41 deals with deemed business income. So section 28 is also business income. Section 41 is also business income. So if there is any income which is related to section 28 or section 41, we are fine with it because both income are PGVP income. So let's say income one is related to 28. We will say, okay, sir, it is fine. Let's say income two is related to section 41. We will say, okay, this is also fine because these are PGVP income and they are already credited. We have no problem with that. But let's say income three is covered by any other head. It is covered by any other head. Let's say it is salary income or it is house property income or it is capital gain income or it is IFOS income, but it is not PGVP. So what we will, we are computing, we are computing PGVP. So why any other head income is doing over here? What it is doing over here? So we'll take it out. So when we'll take away this income, Let's say it was of 3 lakh rupees. If we'll take away, so what impact it will make in my profit? Sir, my profit will decrease because there are any, any income which I'm taking it away. There was certain income which was sitting in my PL account and I'm taking it away. So my, my implication on my profit will be, it will be decreased. 
So if there is any income which you will find that it is related to any other head, it is related to salary, it is related to house property, it is related to capital gain, it is related to IFOS, but not PGBP. So please take it away from here, right? So please take it away. Okay. So what you will say? You will deduct. What implication it will make in my profit? My profit will be reduced. So we will less that. Okay. And also, let's say there is any income, income number four. This was not related to any other head, but it was exempt income. You understand if it is exempt income, then also you have to take it away. Why? Because that is not PGPP. Even that is not I3. This income was, let's say, related to capital gain. So you are computing PGPP, take it away from here deducted from here but that income you have to take to capital gain but this income i4 income let's say it is exempt take it from here and don't take it to any other head right don't take it to any other head because that is exempt income for i3 you have taken it from here and then make it part of that particular head to which it belongs let's say capital gain make it the part make this income as a part of that particular head capital gain but this I-4 was exempt. Take it away from here and don't take it in any other head also. Right? So what you will take it out from here, I-3 also, which is related to other head, but I-3 will go in some other head. It will come out from here and it will go in some other head. I-4 will come out from here and it will not go in any other head because that is an exempt income. Let's say it is agriculture income. Right. Or any share of profit from partnership firm that I'll tell you that share of profit from partnership firm is exempt. Right. Salary. If you receive remuneration from partnership firm, that is taxable. Remuneration means salary, bonus, commission, etc. That is taxable as PGBP. But if it is a share from partnership firm, that is exempt. Share. What does share mean? Share means that the net profit which you have received from the partnership firm, that is taxable at a rate of 30% in the hands of partnership firm. And after paying tax, that money is distributed between the partners. That is called share of profit. So should that partner will again pay tax on that share? The answer is no, sir, because their partnership firm has already paid tax at a rate of 30%. And after deducting that tax, that income which remains profit after tax, that is getting distributed between the partners. That is not taxable. That is share of profit. That I'll tell you in section while uh, discussing section 40 small b also. So take it away. So what you will say, you will list income, which is credited to PNL account, which was credited to PNL account, but it was not related to this head or it is exempt income credited to PNL account, but of other head or exempt. Please take it away because we are computing PGBP. So please take both these income away. I3, take it away and please take it to that particular respective head. But I4, take it away from here and don't take it any in under any of the head because that income is exempt, right? So, okay, now I'm done with my PNL accounts. Okay, sir, this is my PGBP. No, wait. There are some other points also which are mentioned in your question in the form of information. So if some information is also given to you, Let's say first information is given to you that there is any income. Let's say there is non-competing fees you have received. Let's say non-competing fees you have received or of rupees, let's say 12 lakh, which is not credited to PNL account. It is given in your question that there is a non-competing fees of 12 lakh, which is not credited to your PNL account. So what you will do is you will make this income of PGBP because we have we already know and it is covered in under section 28. It should become our PGBP income. And if we have not taken this into consideration while building up our PNL account, then we should take this in our computation statement. So we should take this in our computation. So what we will do is we will the step four is see step three was to check your income side. I'm repeating the steps. Step one is start from your net profit. Either it is if it is net loss, then you can write it as a negative figure. Step two is check your expenses side. Step three is check your income side. Your PNL account is over. Now step four is come to your information. So your fourth step is to see your information. And if there is any information which is useful for your computation, please consider that also. Let's say here it is it was useful 
because it is non competing fees of 12 lakh rupees and it is written over there that this amount is not credited to pnl account so we have to make it part of pgvp so what we will say is you will add this income because this will be this will increase my pgvp income also we will add this what is what you will say income covered under pgvp you can write your own explanation it is not necessary that you will write this also okay this is just for uh, the format sake i am giving it to you so income covered under pgvp but not credited to pnl account but not credited to pnl account this also income you have to make it part you have to add this income correct correct and it might also happen that they are give, uh, they have given you one more information that there is any expense let's say expense number 10 is there and which should be allowed under section 37 which should be allowed under although we don't know as of now uh, we have not revised section 37 as yet but still there was any expense and you know that it should be allowed under section 37 but it is not debited it was ex expense let's say of rupees 1 lakh rupees but it was not debited to be in an account but you understand that this expense should be allowed so why this assessee has not debited this PN into PNL account. So you have to take this into consideration. So you are now taking any expense also into consideration. So if any expense will come in our statement, it will increase our profit or it will decrease our profit. So if you are bringing any of the expense, so it will automatically decrease your profit, right? So you will say less. So this is only the fourth step, which where we are looking at our information part. So you will say less expenses allowed but not debited to pnl account right so you will take these expenses also into consideration and it will reduce your income it will reduce your income so you have to subtract that finally this amount which you will get this is your pgp this is your pgp right so in your examination examiner can give you PNL account also or they can give you these information in the form of statement also that is okay with us right so that is okay with us so they can give you a PNL account also they can give you this all these things in the form of statement also that's fine right uh, when I'll be discussing that question question answer se uh, session also with you then I'll be taking such types of question as well okay so this is this was all about if you would like to write it down you can also write it down else it is written in your um, notes as well if you look at the book it is written over there section 29 computation if someone would like to write it down if you want you can pause the video here and you can write it down here as well okay See, step one, net profit as a PNL account. If it is loss, then take it as a negative figure. Step two, see your expenses side and whatever expense which is debited but not allowed, please add them. Please add, add back. We say that we have to add it back. Why? Because we are taking away those expenses. And if we are taking it away, it will increase our profit. Step three, less income credit to PNL account but covered under other head or exempt. Please take them away from here because this is not related to PGPP. Take it away from here. And step four is information. And if you see that in your information, there, there is any income which is covered either under section 28 or section 41. 41 is deemed business income. You have to consider that income also. You have to add that income. That's also you have to add that income. And if you see that, that there is any information related to any expense, and that expense should be allowed under anywhere in section between section 30 to 37. So that also ex, that expense should also be considered. So that if that expense should be considered, it will reduce my PGPP income. So you will subtract it from here. You will say less, right? This is how you will get your PGPP income. Got it? So now you understand we are, have done, we are through with our first section, section 28 charging section. And we have also uh, know now how to compute our PGPP income as per section 29, right? Although I always say that there's no need to remember the section number, but still you should know the provisions, right? Provisions are very important.
And yes, if in examination you can recall any of the section number, it is good, it is beneficial, it will give you extra advantage if you quote that section number also in case you are 100% sure of that number, right? If you are not sure, if you are doubtful, then please don't write incorrect section. If you are doubtful, please leave it. You can just write the provisions. But yes, if you are 100% sure, please do write it. It will give you extra advantage. At least it gives a good impression in the mind of other examiner. Okay, now we are starting with this part deductions which are allowed what are the expenses which are allowed under section 32 37 which are allowed while deducting while computing your pgbp income so one by one we are starting these expenses the first expense is section 30 section 30 says that if you have if you have any building which you are using in your business if you have any building which you are using in your business so the expense related to that that building is allowed so let's say you have your factory, you have your godown, you have your showroom, you have your shop, or even you, if you have your guest house, which you are using in your business, right? Even if you have some residential houses, which you have given, which you are using in your business, why you are using those residential houses? Because you have given those residential houses to your employees as a rent free accommodation or as, as a concessional rent accommodation. So these are all of the building, your godown, your showroom, your shop, etc. So there might be some expenses which you are incurring. Let's say there is any repair of that building or any insurance of that building, even the municipal taxes of the building, right? So all these expenses which are related to the building, which you use in your business or your profession, that is allowed. Not your own person, not for your personal nature. If that building is used for your personal purpose, then you should not take that expense, right? Only those expenses which are related to your business, that building should be taken into consideration. So if you are paying any rent, if you are paying any rent of that particular building or repair, if you have incurred insurance, rates and taxes of the building, if there are any municipal rates and taxes are the municipal taxes of that building. So that is also allowed. I'm so sorry. I'm not, I'm not showing you the screen. Okay. So if there is any rent repairs, insurance rates and taxes of the building that should be allowed, right? But please uh, note that notional rent is not allowed. If you are paying your rent, if you are actually the tenant in that building, then rent is allowed. But if you are the owner of the building, you are the owner of the building and you say that if I would have let out this building on rent, so I would can generate 1 lakh rupees per month is rent. So in uh, the entire year, 1 lakh into 12, 12 lakh is my opportunity cost, which is getting lost. So can I debit that expense also? No, that is a notional rent. Notional rent is not allowed only your actual expenses which you are in right actual expenses so it should be a actual rent notional rent is not allowed sir if let's say if i am paying rent to my relative to my father or to my mother or to anyone and any of my relative that that is also allowed yes it is allowed if it is on a fair market value that we will see in section 482 also so uh, payment to related party we will see in section 482 but yes it is allowed but if you are paying the rent to yourself that is a notional rent. Notional rent is not allowed, right? So rent repairs, insurance, rates and taxes are allowed. Second important thing is, sir, if it is actual rent or if it is repair, if it is actual repair, and please mind it, it should not be a repair, should be of current nature. It should not be of capital nature because if the repair is of such a nature that is, it is a capital expenditure, so that expenditure, that capital expenditure should be capitalized in the value of the building. It is not allowed as the revenue expenses. Then it, it has to be capitalized and on that capitalized value, we will charge, charge depreciation, right? So on repairs, it should be a current repairs. Okay. Second important thing is that, sir, if there is an actual rent, we are a tenant in a particular building and we are using it for our business. So this is actual rent. I'll say, okay, actual rent is allowed. So let's say if uh, it's an actual rent, but we have not paid the rent as, as of now. Can it be allowed on due basis? That is accrual basis. Can it be allowed? The answer is yes, it can be allowed. It depends upon the method of accounting which you are following. So we have section 145 over here, which tells us the method of accounting. And section 145 is equally applicable to the head PGBP also and to the head IFOS also. See, in salary, we know salary is taxable on due on receipt basis, whichever is earlier. You remember that. How is house property taxable? What is the basis of taxability of house property? Only on due basis. Only on due basis, house property is taxable. But PGBP is taxable 
as per we will compute pgbp income as per the method of accounting followed by ssc if ssc is following accrual basis of accounting or we can say due basis of accounting or commonly we say mercantile system of accounting all expenses all income should be taken on mercantile basis accrual basis due basis right one and the same thing if ssc is following cash basis of accounting then only those expenses only those income should be considered which are actually paid during the year or actually received during the year right i'm saying about expenses if it is actually paid during the year about i'm saying about income which is actually received during the year right if so if pgbp is very flexible it says that whatever the method which is which is being followed by the ssc please follow, follow that right so you remember that section 145 is regarding your method of accounting followed by the ssc so even if you have not paid rent repairs insurance that is completely fine that is completely fine if if you are following accrual basis and if the question is silent on which method which method ssc is following please always assume accrual basis mercantile basis right but if the question it is specifically mentioned that the ssc is following cash basis please follow it accordingly then you have to do it accordingly that only those expenses which are actually paid actually paid during the year only then you have to take that right so this 145 is also important generally we will say accrual basis generally we will say accrual basis unless until question says that it is if it is cash basis then only take cash otherwise accrual basis but we understand there is one more very important section which will come later section 43b 43b what is 43b the very important section of pgbp it says that there are certain expenses which are allowed only if they are paid up to the due date of roi we will see section 43b later also but 43b says only those there is a list 43b says irrespective of the method of accounting followed by the ssc ssc is following any method of accounting there are certain expenses which are allowed only when they are actually paid that is covered under section 43b and it has a list of some six seven expenses and one of the expenses and there is also an amendment in section 43b i'll tell you uh, later when once i'll be discussing 43b with you but yes one of the expenses in section 43b is any type of tax or cess payable to government any type of tax any type of tax so please tell me rates and taxes of building is any type of tax which is payable to government government can be your central government government can be your state government government can be your local authority and municipal taxes are paid to local authority so this is covered this is covered in the section 43b also so rent if you have not paid okay with us repair you have not paid insurance you have not paid okay with us because if you are following accrual basis mercantile basis it's allowed but rates and taxes should be allowed because it is subject to 43b so it should be allowed only if they are paid up to the due date of roi that we'll discuss later in 43b so please remember that notional rent is not allowed expenses should not be of capital in nature it should be revenue in nature and rates and taxes are allowed subject to 43b then we have section 31 section 31 is related to repairs and insurance of plant and machinery or furniture so it is related to plant and machinery and furniture see section 30 was related to only building it was related to only building but here section 31 is related to plant and machinery and furniture if you are paying repairs or insurance if there is any repair of plant and machinery or insurance of plant and machinery or furniture it is allowed so if rent of machine is there rent of machine is allowed but not in 31 31 only covers two types of expenses repairs or insurance rent of machine or rent of furniture will be allowed we will see later in section 37 but 31 covers only repairs and insurance right okay so let's come to next section section 32 depreciation okay what we'll do is uh, let me uh, uh 32 will uh, take in my next lecture right let me let us keep it here and we'll continue 32 in our next lecture till then thank you so much bye and take care